In this video, we're going to discuss the cell diversity. We're going to discuss what are the factors that are involved in the cell diversification. We're going to discuss the examples for prokaryotic as well as for eukaryotic cells. We are also going to discuss the basic facts of prokaryotic as well as the eukaryotic cells. I hope that this video is going to help you to understand this particular topic, the basics of this particular topic, which is cell diversity. Before we move on to the presentation part, I have a quick request to make. If you are new to the channel, then please do subscribe to the channel and show your support. Let's discuss an important topic, which is cell diversity. When we talk about diversity, that means variety, variability. So basically what we are discussing here is the variety in the cells based on their shape, based on their size, based on their chemistry. So here I can tell you that, that uh, the, if we take the example of bacterial cells, even in that case, you have different cell types. In case of humans, for example, neurons, the nerve cell that I'm trying to design here is completely different than the skin cell, right? They are different in shape and size. They are different in their chemistry. The biochemistry of the cells is quite different when we talk about bacteria or uh, the human cells. Their requirement can also be significantly different. So this was a general introduction of the diversity present in cells. And when we talk about the diversity, we have the basic examples, specifically when we talk about the cells. We have two types of cells, prokaryotic and eukaryotic. Very fundamental and basic feature of the cell. Prokaryotic cells, the examples are the bacterial cells. And in case of eukaryotic, you have uh, animals, plants, and other cell types. Here, I'm trying to design the the coccus, which is round cell type, and also the bacilli. In case of eukaryotic, as I have already mentioned, plant cells, animal cells, fungus, and protist. They are the examples of eukaryotic cell types. Now let's discuss other features. For the prokaryotic cell, we know that the DNA is not present inside a compartment, as in case of eukaryotic cell. One important point the prokaryotic cells, they contribute to huge biomass. The dry weight of E. coli cell is 25 multiplied by 10 raised to the power minus 4 grams. And in case of humans, the weight of the microorganism is approximately 1 to 1.5 kilograms. And also the organism number of organism is around 10 raised to the power 17. On Earth, the organism number of organism is around 10 raised to the power 30 which is huge and the and the biomass is around 10 raised to the power of 12 kilograms so that's huge and because of their diversity they can be present in the deep sea they can also be present up in the atmosphere so what i mean by that is cells are diversified they are acclimatized they can survive in drastic environmental conditions in case of eukaryotic cells in eukaryotes you have nucleus for the genetic material. So that's the important difference. There are so many differences. The size is basically 10 to 100 micrometer. They are larger than bacteria, obviously. A typical fibroblast is 15 micrometer in size. And then because of the big size, its dry weight is basically 1000 times higher than the bacterial cell, if we take the example of E. coli. So because of their differences, they are categorized in different groups. One group that we can uh, mention here is eukaryota, which includes plants, fungus, and animals, right? There are, uh, the, these are the eukaryotic uh, organisms. And then is the archaea. In archaea, you have thermococcus, you have Helococcus. These are the typical example I'm mentioning. I'm not mentioning all the example. I'm just trying to tell you that diversification then leads to the classification of the organisms. And then you have eubacteria, which includes E. coli, bacilla, bacillus, right? These are the typical example of eubacteria. Because of the change in their cellular feature, because of change in their function, they are categorized into 
big groups as I mentioned here eukaryotes they form plants fungus animals you have archaea you have eubacteria so I hope now you have a better understanding of cell diversity you know some interesting facts about diversity you know what are the basic features of prokaryotic as well as the eukaryotic cells all right i hope the video was helpful for you to understand the basics of cell diversity we have discussed two basic cell types prokaryotic and the eukaryotic now i sincerely hope that you have a good idea of prokaryotic and the eukaryotic cell types with that note i have a quick request to make if you are new to this channel then please do subscribe to the channel and show your support thank you